So joining me right now on set is Fox News senior strategic analyst, General Jack King. General, always a pleasure. Um, that struck me, what the president said, and he said this a couple times now, that Putin is neither an enemy nor a friend. He is a competitor. Um, is that the way to think about it? Well, I think he thinks about it in terms of a personal relationship. And therefore, I don't think he thinks of too many people as being his enemy. But clearly, Russia is trampling all over United States interests around the world and those of our allies. Russia sees the United States as a strategic opponent and adversary to their goals and objectives. They resent the global hegemony that the United States has had for years. And they, they want to re turn Russia to the greatness that it had, where it's a world player. And we're in the way of that. So, Can yes. I ask you about that, though? <clears throat> as we look back in history, I mean, you think back to the USSR. Did they really think of themselves as a world player back then? I mean, when people were standing in line to get a loaf of bread, um, when, when you couldn't get a, an apartment of, of a decent size to, to take care, you know, to, for your family to live in, or when you, you, know, you couldn't get your phone hooked up? For months and months? I mean, that's when they considered themselves well, they were world reckoned, players? They felt themselves a superpower. They were because mm -hmm. of the thousands of nuclear weapons they had and the sheer size of their military. They have always had a struggling economy. They have lived with that throughout their history since the communists have taken over. Mm -hmm. And Russia now obviously has a struggling economy. Right. And they, they ask their people to suffer quite a bit. The Russian people have a lot of pride, and they've suffered before. They, res they respect Putin, probably not as much as advertised, but they, they like the fact that he's a strong man. They like the fact that he's, that he's got Russia back there in a position where people at least respect it and sometimes fear it. So what is his real intention? What is his real goal? Does he have territorial dreams yeah, then, oh, of taking over much more of Europe? The, the Russians are, we're not, and, and when we look at it from the West, but when you look at it from the East, they had a Frenchman in the 19th century mm -hmm. that lit Moscow on fire. They had a German that got within 30 miles of the city in the 20th century and nearly defeated Russia. Mm -hmm. They look at the West. That's why they've always wanted those Eastern European countries that Stalin had. Mm -hmm. He wants Eastern Europe. He wants to control and influence Eastern Europe as a strategic buffer. They still look at... Western Europe, not the way we do, they still look at Germany as a potential threat once again, mm -hmm. as they've had to deal with them twice before. And that, that reality is born out of the fact that they could see nationalism coming back, um, white supremacism coming back, and a return to the, the pollution of Nazism. So, are, yes. Are any of these fears well-founded? Do they have reason to actually fear Europe, or is this just politically expedient for Vladimir I don't think there's reason for them to fear uh, Western Europe, but that's sort of irrelevant because they do, and they have historical concerns about it. And that's why they want influence and control over Eastern Europe. They resent the NATO alliance. They resent that all of those buffer countries, Trish, are now in NATO. Yeah. And they want to break that alliance initially to weaken it and then eventually to break it. So what the president is doing by strengthening the alliance, making certain that this burden sharing, making certain that this significant capital investment is a big step. That's an interesting characterization in terms of how you put it. In other words, strengthening the alliance, because I think many who criticize this president and his policies would say he's trying to weaken it. But I understand where you're coming from in that if you say, hey, all you Europeans, actually do what you committed to, pay that 2 percent or maybe even put a little more in, that would actually make it bigger and stronger, which, by the way, is what they should want, yeah. right? You know, I actually, I, the, the Trump, President Trump uses language that most presidents have in, in dealing with our allies in, in Europe. We've always coddled these European leaders to a fault, in my judgment. Why? And, and, and I mean, why, why have we done that? I, I, don't, have, I don't have a clue, really. It, it's been a fascination of American presidents for years. And this president has just looked at it very coldly. Hey, look at it. You're not paying enough. We, we need to do more in NATO. And he criticizes them for it. And all, everybody just focuses on the criticism, not recognizing what is the output here. The output is a strength in NATO, something that can be an adequate deterrent to Russia. And right now, we're not a sufficient deterrent to Russia. What he, if he wanted to move into Eastern Europe, he could do it with ease. And we have got to impose more cost on him than what we're doing. Look at what he brought up with Angela Merkel 
mm-hmm. about what she's doing. Mm-hmm. I mean, here, here, the here she is. The pipeline, right? Like, why are you, why are you giving them exactly. more business? And she has the largest economy in Europe, and she's making one of the least amount of contributions to the defense. And then she's got this sweetheart deal worth billions of dollars going with the Russians. You know where all that money goes? Where Putin, a disproportionate amount of that money will go to military preparedness. What a waste, right. I, I hear you. Um, so what should the president's message be to Vladimir? Well, I think, I think he's got to very strongly call out Vladimir. First of all, he wants to have a personal relationship, like he did with President Xi. He cites that as being successful. We wouldn't have got the movement on North Korea if he didn't have that relationship. Putin capable of that? <laughs> I think I mean, he's very capable of it. Of having I, I think a personal he, relationship. I think Putin is a master at psychological warfare, at manipulating. I think he took advantage of our two previous presidents to a certain degree, the last one for sure. I think he read into him that he was avoiding confrontation. And I, I think he's probably sized up the president pretty well. I think he'll come out of there and they'll feel like they've got a decent relationship. But the president has got to lay, and I'm convinced he will, he'll be very well briefed. He'll put down on the major issues, this debacle we have in Syria, their occupation of Crimea and eastern, eastern Ukraine, and the pressure they're putting on the Baltic states and, and eastern Europe. If you want a stable world, why are you doing all of these things? And there are things that we can work together on. We can work together on countering radical Islam. Putin has a, a threat from radical Islam in the southern part of Russia. That's why he's one of the reasons he's interested in the Middle East. The other is he wants influence and some control over all that oil there. Not that he needs it, but because it sustains the world economy. So, and we can also talk about nuclear weapons reduction. So there are issues there that we have common interest. And I think North Korea is something he's got to kind of punch Putin in the nose over yeah. because they've been backdooring oh, sure. the North Koreans. Yeah, stop trading with the North Koreans. Yeah, exactly. Um, General, good to see you. Thank you very much.